Did you know that there is a powerful healing herb that you can grow in your own backyard? Well, today we're gonna to make a comfrey salve. It's a skin soothing salve that's good for cuts, scrapes, bruises, sore muscles, and way more. And it actually works. My name's Loanna and this is Little Bit of Homestead. I am not an herbalist, but I am a licensed esthetician. So healthy skin, I know a thing or two about. Before I continue with this video, I just wanted to come on and say, this video was filmed during the tropical storm Helene before we fully understood the extent of the devastation in our area and our thoughts and prayers are with everyone affected. Thank you. First, we're gonna go over what you need and where we can get it, and then we'll get into how to make it, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why Comfrey is excellent for skincare. You're gonna need an oil to infuse the Comfrey in. This is an avocado oil. You're also gonna need some Comfrey leaves or roots. I have grown these in my garden, but you can also order some online, and I will link that in the description. And you're going to need some beeswax. I'll link that in the description as well. Comfrey is super easy to grow and it's been used medicinally for years. It's also known as knit bone because it's been used to heal broken bones. And it's great for sprains, bruises, and it speeds up recovery for scrapes and cuts. One of the properties in it is allantoin, and allantoin stimulates cell growth and it accelerates the cell turnover rates. And that paired with the natural steroid that's in the plant, it makes it a powerhouse that speeds up healing. So whatever you do, do not use comfrey on any type of puncture wound because that can cause the skin to heal too fast and it would seal up the wound and that would risk infection. It's also anti-inflammatory and excellent for your joints and arthritis. Oh, and it's also extremely safe for your pets. After I pick my comfrey, I just lay it on a shelf, forget about it and let it air dry. Here is comfrey that I've already dried and that's what we're gonna make the oil with. I'll go over real quick how you want to infuse your oil so you can get some steeping and get making this as soon as possible. I have my dried comfrey. You may hear all kinds of wind. I've just filled the jar about three-fourths full with some dried comfrey. And then the oil of your choice. You can use olive oil. I prefer avocado oil. It's a little bit lighter than olive oil and it doesn't have that olive oil smell. But if olive oil is what you got, use it. Both are good for your skin. But I do prefer the avocado oil. Now when I'm doing stuff for my face, I like to use an apricot kernel oil. There you go. And you just make sure that all of the plant matter is covered completely with the oil. That's it. You just set this aside for six or eight weeks and it infuses the oil. Now there is a quick double boiler method you can do um, I personally don't do that. I can maybe link a video that tells you how to do that, but that's just if you're in a hurry. This, I think you get a more potent product and it's worth the wait. And after this is sat for about six or eight weeks, I will strain it and this is what you have. This video was actually supposed to be my tallow balm face cream, but a few nights ago, I decided to um, trip over the garden hose and face plant into one of our pavers out front. I looked like I just had a big asphalt burn from my lip, my nose, up here, and on my cheek. Now this was just about three days ago. I immediately put on the comfrey oil, and the next day I woke up and totally expected a lot worse than what I saw. And I've been applying the comfrey oil every day, a couple times a day, and it's not too bad. But I'm just thankful I didn't scratch my glasses except for the frame and I didn't break any teeth. So I did not do the face cream video and I promise that is coming up next, but that did prompt me to uh, do the comfrey video. It's nasty out there. 
Once you infuse the comfrey into the oil, you can stop right there and just use the oil. And that's what I've been using for the last year or so. And that's what I used on my face. However, I got to thinking it would be a great time to um, show you how to do the oil and make a salve. And the salve isn't as messy. So I'll be glad to have some salve. Let's get to making our salve. We're gonna use one cup of the comfrey infused oil and we're gonna use one to two tablespoons of the beeswax. Mm. I'm gonna start off, the power's trying to go out. I'm going to start with one tablespoon. You can buy this in pellets too. I'm gonna to do about one and a half tablespoon because I wanna make sure that it's a firm salve. After you make it, if you decide it's too firm, use less beeswax the next time. Now we're gonna take this to the stove and we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna do like a makeshift double boiler. I put the washcloth underneath so that the glass isn't sitting straight on the stainless. Um, that way, it's less chance to break the glass. Turn that down a little bit. You don't want the water to boil so much that water splashes into your oil and your beeswax. Okay, it's good and melted now. And I'm gonna do one cup of the comfrey oil. That beeswax cooled off really fast, so we're gonna stick that back on the heat real low. We're gonna get this gently warmed back up. Don't even take it off of the heat when it comes time to add your oil to the beeswax. I got flustered with the power going on and off so don't pay attention to me. We're just gonna let this melt and incorporate and we're gonna keep the temperature low for two reasons. We don't wanna destroy any of the medicinal properties in the oil and we also don't wanna get water bubbling and splashing and getting into our oil because if you get moisture in your oil, it can mold. Okay, everything looks good and melted. Now we're gonna pour it out into our containers. We want them to be clean and dry. And they are dry. Remember, moisture is not our friend. Now we wait. You could sit this in the fridge if you wanted to speed it up, but I'm in no hurry. I'm also not gonna cover it until it starts to cool off a little bit. It's not that hot, but it's warm, and I don't want to risk any condensation to form, and moisture is not your friend with oils. Looks like the sun's coming out. Now at this point, you could also have added some essential oils and other things like that, but I'm just going for the straight up comfrey side. Like I was saying earlier, one of the main properties of comfrey is allantoin. And allantoin, you will know if you go look in a lot of your hair products, skin products, all the products is one of the main ingredients. One of the reasons you always see it in your cosmetics is because it stimulates cell regeneration and that's a good thing. The salve is almost set up. We'll take a look at that in a second. And in the description, I'm gonna link some of the ingredients that I'll be using in the next video in case you wanted to get some of that and have on hand so you can make your own face tallow cream. I'll link that in the description. I won't let this stuff go to waste. 
Some of the things that I plan on using this for is I have something, a rash that I get on my elbow. The tallow balm also helps with that, but hopefully the comfrey will make it go away. And I wanted to have some on hand to use for my hands. I get some sore joints. So come back, I'll update you on how that's going. And there's your beautiful healing comfrey cream. Ideally, I would store it in a dark container, but I don't have any. <laughs> and I had these, so. And there you have a comfrey oil or a comfrey salve. Just keep it in a cool, dark place out of direct sunlight and it should last you for six months to a year. I guarantee you'll probably use it up before you, it goes bad. I hope you got some benefit out of this. Keep an eye out for the tallow video coming up any day now. If you hit like and subscribe and the little notification bell, it'll let you know when I've posted that video and you won't miss it. I thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. My name's Loanna and this is Little Bit of Homestead.